So first I need to make a template to use with my router bit and bearing. So I have a piece of plywood that I'm using on my drill press and some Forstner bits to do the basic holes. And this is just pieces of scrap. But basically this is going to let me get the overall shape of what I want. And that should be the size. And next I need to smooth out the edges. So I just use rasps and files and such to clean all that up. And that works pretty good. And there you can see it's basically cleaned up. And now I'm going to do my first test piece with the router and the bit. And by laying the router in sideways, I managed to get down in and going along, going along. And here I had the test piece clamped into the vise and the template down on top of that. And that worked pretty good. Next is another test piece using a similar result with slightly better clamping on you know, three clamps. And just going around and clearing all it out. And both of these are three quarter inch test pieces because the final board that I'm trying to cut the slot in is that big. And here I got a set of saws to use for my Dremel and plunge router bit and set down in how far I wanted to go and I just ran the saw around the inside because the saw blade is the same thickness as the piece of sheet metal that I'm going to try and use for the, the over, you know, the slide in door uh, for the storage nook. And then I realized that, okay, that's big enough, but the piece of board was too wide, so I trimmed the end off, and then I'm working on cleaning out the little edge bit, so I use a chisel and such to clean that out. And then... Right in there, as I also realized that I lost the, the cover for the chisel that I f end up finding later off camera. Uh, so you, well, you see it there, right? That that chisel piece, that, there it went, woof, gone. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'll find it later. It only went in the dustbin. Uh, and here I'm using my little cutoff, flexible cutoff saw because that's the right thickness. And that lets me get down in the edge and then that fit in nice in the slot. So next, if I cut the piece of sheet metal to be the same size as the saw blade, then surprise, surprise, that will actually fit in the slot. So here's me setting it up to you know, make basically make a template of the same size as there and then just using my chin snips to cut that out. And yeah, it's pretty boring, but you know, hey, it works. These are really good tin snips. They cut fairly straight, which I was impressed with. And then that actually fits in the slot, so that's good. Then I realized in order to get it out, you need to have the little end bend over. So I'm going to make a little, a tiny L at the end. So I put it in the vise and carefully pound it over the end and realized that it was not straight or I couldn't get to the other side, so I put it the other side and try and straighten it out some. And yeah, not quite straight, so a little bit more on that side. And All right, now it's a square corner on the end. And you can just reach in, it's like, so that sort of L, and that way your fingers will hit it and such. And here, I'm doing the real piece. Going along, going along, going along. So far, so good. So far, so good. And then the template moved. And it's like, oh, dang it. All right. Readjust. What am I going to fix? Uh, just clamp it again. Hopefully, it'll be fine. Luckily, it didn't bobble too badly, and since this was the, the final piece. But yeah, so that, that part worked. That all good, and then cleaned off nice. And then again, using the chisel method, and then the little saw. Luckily, I didn't change the settings for the saw or the router, so those were pretty much drop-in fixes. And, and I looked at the raw footage, and uh, this whole process up until I do the non-time lapse uh, only took about 17 minutes of total footage, so that was pretty good. Uh, you know, for all of the, you know, both test pieces plus the final thing, it was 17 minutes. So, realistically, this did not take a whole lot of time. A lot of little fiddling around, but works perfect. And it's all good. Well, the notch is in. It came out okay. The one thing that I had a problem with was... I had this on there and I had the clamps too far away and while I was doing some of the work it shifted and bobbled a little bit but eh, luckily I caught it quick but the metal goes in it's definitely a friction fit 
but that should be all right. And there were two of the two of the holes from the other side, but I was able to put super glue on the edges to reinforce them, so that should help. And this basically goes in like that. That way, this is pretty much smooth. Matches that way, and it matches that way. So the edge of the metal is the same as this part and the side. And there's the little thumb bit, so you just grab it with your thumb and pull out. Take the pieces out. Slide it back. I think it'll work. It should anyway. So now we'll see the other side. So from the end, looks like that, which should be fine. And where I decided to place it was I tried to do most of it in this section where there weren't holes, but it turns out that this hole and this hole end up going into the open area. So I'm hoping that the pegs, like there's a bottom to these holes normally. This, the bottom is much further. So hopefully the, that will work. I think it'll be all right. It should be anyway. They won't go the whole way through as long as you put the metal thing back. And you're gonna normally have this on a table anyway, so it's still, it'll stop at the table. So yeah, I think that's gonna work pretty good. And you can see how it would be sitting on a table. So, yep. That is a storage added to a cribbage board. And I don't know how to play cribbage, but obviously a lot of people do. But in any case, that worked using the router and the Dremel with the little saw blade. That was very useful for cutting the slots. I think it's going to be fine. Obviously, with as with anything, you have to be careful when you close it. But I think that'll work good.